Hello, my name is Peyton. Thank you for clicking on my very first floss tube video. I have been telling myself that I'm going to record something and that I'm going to do this for far too long. And it's always been like, well, the weather's not nice. So I don't know if good lighting or like you've been working all day and you haven't gotten out of your pajamas. Um, but I was up and out of the house and dressed and looking decent and I was like you know what you don't have any excuses anymore so here I am I have been a bit of a floss tube lurker for the last almost a year now yeah about a year um I'm terrible at leaving comments I overthink my comments too much I need to get better at leaving comments um and engaging with content but I have been lurking in the background on FlossTube and, and cross-stitch Instagram content and all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to be making a video and being able to kind of contribute a little bit to the community. And uh, even if nobody watches this, being able to uh, pretend that I'm talking to uh, some fellow stitchers and sharing. Uh, my stuff. So I'm very excited. I have a couple finishes from the last year and a bit to show you. Um, some I'm really proud of, some less so. <laughs> um, I've got some whips, um, um, but I will introduce myself first. So my name is Peyton. I'm based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, as you can tell from my pronunciation of Toronto. Uh, I'm not born and raised here. I was born in the suburbs uh, just outside of the city. I am now living in the city and living my city dream. I love it. It's a beautiful city. It's so diverse and so exciting. And especially after a year in uh, quarantine and in lockdown, especially in Ontario, our lockdowns have been quite intense, which is good. We are fighting the virus and slowly but surely we are moving forward and life is moving on, but it feels really nice to be in my little apartment, in my own little space, uh, my little stitching haven as I like to think of it. Um, but I'm based in the city. I have, my background is in uh, literature and theater. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in English Lit. Uh, as you can see, books and literature is a very important part of my life. Um, and so is theater. I'm currently working as an independent scholar for musical theater on the side. Um, and then in my day job, I work in the travel industry. I work as a um, travel designer. I design itineraries and work with clients to kind of build the trips that they dream of. So I specialize in certain parts of Europe um, and I was working in travel pre-COVID. And then when COVID hit, I was very quickly put on inactive status by my former employers um, and then you know waited in the wings for things to change and, and for life to go back to normal uh, before I was ultimately let go from there. I worked a couple odd jobs. I was living with my parents at the time so I was very very fortunate to have that um, that I, I could I was with my parents I didn't have bills to pay um, I was very, very fortunate and privileged to be able to have that. Um, and then a couple months ago, I was invited to join um, a new pilot project and a new pilot team for a new uh, travel company. And I am thrilled to be here and I love talking about travel and traveling the world. And as you'll see, a lot of my cross stitch is kind of focused around my love for uh, European cities and, and for travel in general. Um, I need to stop looking at myself. I need to like look into the camera. There we go. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to talk about travel, you know where to find me. I am at Stitching Out a Sky, Stitching Out O U T, a uh, Sky. It's a reference to a lyric from Sunday in the Park with George, love of musical theater. Um, the line is Mapping Out a Sky, um, and that's my personal Instagram, but then Stitching Out a Sky is where all my stitching is. Um, but yeah, so I work during the days as uh, within the travel industry, working on travel things and talking to people all day about all these like bucket list trips that they want to go on. And then in the afternoons and after work, 
I work as a independent scholar and I do, excuse me, I do research um, on my own and I submit to conferences and panels and presentations and publication um, and I specialize in looking at uh, musical theater from uh, a literary perspective. So like imagine reading I don't know, Wicked or Hamilton or Rent or something like that, uh, but with the same kind of detail that people look at Shakespeare. So that's who I am. Uh, I turned 25 in August, so my birthday is coming up. I am a lover of cross stitch. I started stitching in 2014, end of 2014, beginning 2015. Uh, but that was very like off and on. I would pick up a project and then kind of like put it away and not pick it up for another like six months or a year. And then I'd pick it up again. And I just, once COVID hit, I like so many other people just needed, like I just needed something to do. Um, especially once like travel hit and like our industry really started going down for quite a long time. I just needed something to do. And I started stitching and I really re-found and like rekindled this love of, of mine for putting needle and thread to fabric. So, uh, and then earlier on this year, after, you know, finding a lot of uh, fiber artists on TikTok, which is where I lose far too much of my day, I picked up crochet. Um, and I see a lot of floss tubers that are also, um, like cross stitchers that are also knitters. I don't see many people that do crochet. Um, and I love it. It's so much fun. It's one hook. It's much easier in my mind than knitting is because you got your two hooks and then you're like double pointed and you're working in the round. And it's too much for me, too much for me. Um, I'd love to learn how to knit socks one day, but not yet. I've been trying to crochet a pair of socks. It's very fiddly. I'm not sure if I love it just yet, but that is that for that. Um, if you have any questions for me about me or my life or anything like that, I would love to answer them if and when I make a new video after this. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's me. I don't know. I feel very awkward like talking about myself. Like, Let's get on to the stitching. If you have questions, I'll answer them later. Um, I am going to show you a couple finishes that I had pre like my love being rekindled at the start of 2020. So these are all from like the six years prior to like when I really got um, like really invested in stitching. Um, and a lot of them I that I did, I actually don't have pictures of because I like made them for like my brother or I made them for my parents or for friends and I just don't have photos of them anymore. Um, the first one that I can remember, these are all done on 14 count white Ada. I didn't know you could stitch on anything else. And to show you how baby I was at this and how like literally like I didn't know anything, <laughs> I will show you. Um, and then I will uh, explain this. So this is my first piece. This was charted by me, I think. I think I put this in pick to pat and was like, I want to stitch a tangled thing. You can see how horribly off center it is. Um, and also nothing is lying flat. Nothing is lying straight. And I did not realize that you could split DNC thread. So the next, this, and then the next two that I'm going to show you are stitched with six strands of floss. I didn't know. I didn't know. So you can see kind of how funky it looks and how silly it looks and all of that. It says, at last I see the light. Um, I think I put this through Pictopat or I found a free PDF of it or something like that. Um, but it is just very crudely finished. You can just see how messy it is at the back. Um, it's done in six strands on white Ada. It's really not great, but it was like one of my very first pieces. I actually don't have my first piece I ever did. It was a little cross-stitched Pikachu that um, I gave to my brother and I have no idea if he still has it. Um, the next piece that I did is definitely something I ran through pick to pat. 
because I remember like fighting with this pattern and it looks terrible, but it is what it is. This is the Ring of Keys from the Fun Home Musical. As you can see, again, it is done completely in like six strands. It's super, super messy. It looks terrible. <laughs> you can see where I had started putting in lyrics and then I had picked it out. And like, it's again, so crudely finished. Um, but yeah, you know, I love these, I say that I hate these pieces and that they're so messy and that they're so terrible, but like, I learned so much about these pieces, like through these pieces, and I wouldn't be as in love with cross-stitching as I am now without having done these pieces and had them up. Um, and had these skills pre-pandemic and like had these materials that I could like, you know, work with. Um, the next one is one that I'm actually quite proud of um but it has a bit of a story behind it and I want to kind of bring this up and it's a story of not knowing what you're doing is wrong and then making amends to fix that and I'll get into what I mean by that so this is my next one it's a lovely typewriter it says Newsies stop the world it's I love Newsies the musical and the film um and this is based on Catherine Plummer's song watch what happens and it's again done in six strands of uh, DMC floss. I don't know what the floss is. I know that it's all DMC and it's crudely finished, but hey, it has some pretty fabric on the back, um, but it's still like quite messy and like bad and all of that. So what I'll say about this piece is that this was, I got this pattern on Pinterest and I zoomed in on the image and I stitched it without buying the pattern. And at the time, I didn't know that that was wrong. Um, I should have known that that was wrong. I was in my 20s, I or like late teens, early 20s. I should have known that that was wrong because if I clicked through from my like Pinterest board, I could see that there was an Etsy listing and I could see that there was an Etsy listing and I still zoomed in and I still did that. And I stole this pattern. When I started watching FlossTube about a year and a half ago, I realized, oh shit, I stole in that pattern and that's not fair. And I have taken away, I have made something that I did not pay for the pattern. I actively did this and this is wrong. I, I stitched this years ago. I think I made this in like 2016 and still in 2020, I went back onto Etsy and I purchased the pattern. Have I ever downloaded those files? No, I'm not but it's a good practice in saying, I fucked up, I messed up. I stole a designer's work. I cannot for the life of me right now remember the designer. I'll put their name on the screen now and I'll also put it in the description box, but I stole a pattern. And five years later, I realized what I had done and I went and made it right. And I've never done it since. It was the one time I'd ever done it and I, you know, everything else was like Googling free patterns and working on them that way and getting free patterns from Reddit. But this is one of the times that I didn't know that what I was doing was super wrong. And that's wrong of me. But I also think that it's important that we, when we talk about stuff like that and we say like, in situations where it is one person making a mistake, write that wrong, say you're sorry make that apology. Um, and I can now look at this and feel a lot better about having it up in my house and, you know, seeing it on a daily basis, because I know that in the end, the artist was compensated for their time and the designer was compensated for it. Um, so if you think that what I'm saying is wrong or whatever, I don't care. Um, I feel like I have done the best that I can to make it right. Um, and I'm really proud of this piece. It was the first piece that I felt looked really neat and really clear and I just, I loved it. So, um, and I've learned a lot. It's the one and only time I've ever done a backstitch, ever. So this is my other piece. So these are the three pieces that I still have from my pre-pandemic stitching. 
and now let's move into the more exciting ones that I actually have like notes on about like what I've stitched and like what it was stitched on um so where to begin oh where to begin let's start with this one I have a couple other finishes, but I've either given them away or I don't have good photos of them. Um, this one is, and this is where you'll see my love of travel coming in. This is um, Pretty Little Paris by Satsuma Street. It is done all in the Called for DMC and it's on, I believe it's either a 16 or an 18 count white Ada. I love Satsuma Street patterns. I loved doing this one. I had my eye on the Pretty Little Cities series for so long. This was my first Satsuma Street and I will be doing more in the future. I have not. Um, as you can see, I'm really, none of these are finished <laughs> properly um, because I just don't, I'm, I'm, I love the patterns and I'm like, well, if I'm going to spend all this money framing them and, and finishing them. So I have no finished objects uh, or FFOs. I only have FOs. I don't have any fully finished objects, but I have finished objects. So I don't know. I feel like I just need to like pull the trigger and like get some stuff finished. But yeah, this is my pretty little Paris. I love the color, the color palette. I love this piece. Um, and Paris is one of my favorite cities. France is a place that uh, when I'm working, that's a place that I specialize in. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful. You got Notre Dame, Eiffel Tower, um, the Sacre Coeur, Moulin Rouge. Like, it's just, it's beautiful and I love it. And I want to get this framed and have something done with it. But who knows? Maybe one day I will. I think, I, I think like, and so what you'll learn from me is that I'm quite a monogamous stitcher. Um, I, I think right now I have like four whips. And like that stresses me out having so many like unfinished things. So I like to finish things, um, but I just, I can't fully finish them. So this one took me like a week to do, like probably less than. Um, but that's also like morning, noon and night stitching because I was unemployed for most of my stitching time. Um, I wanna save that one for later. This is a more recent finish. And this is from the Stitching Book Club. Um, and this is the Pride and not Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Sal. Um, I love it, it's so delicate, it's so pretty. This blue is not is getting very blown out on camera. It's like, that's kind of a good indicator of the color. Um, but this is an 18 count Ada in sky blue with all of the Call for DMC. Um, yeah, it was super fun. It was a super quick stitch. I love the delicate flower at the center of it. I love just all of the little flowers around it. I don't know, it's very pretty. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this. Um, part of me wants to just finish it in a hoop, um, but I don't know. I don't know yet. Again, I have no idea how any of these are gonna be finished, if at all. Who knows when I'm actually gonna finish them, but I think that it's really pretty. I love it. Um, I haven't started on the Little Women one yet, um, but I am, I'm part of, I have the full year subscription to the Stitching Book Club. Um, and so I know that there's, the fall one is going to be Great Gatsby. And Gatsby is my favorite book of all time. It's one of my favorite things to analyze and write about. I wrote my undergraduate thesis on The Great Gatsby. I have presented at conferences on The Great Gatsby. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and so I cannot wait for the Gatsby. Um, we have a Gatsby pattern coming out at some point this fall, I think. Um, next one is my pride and joy. It is the stitch that I am to this date most proud of. I truly, truly love it. And it is also a stitch that one of these days I'll make a, I'll stitch something that I don't look at and go, well, that was a learning lesson. So yeah, I will just show you. This is Santorini by Stitchrovia. It is gorgeous. Look at how little fabric I have on the edge. That's it. Because I had this like spare piece of, it's on white, it's white 18 count Ada. 
um, with all of the called for DMC. The only thing that's missing is I don't, it's tried to have a big sun in the corner. I didn't want it. I wanted it nice and clean up top. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. How am I going to frame this? <laughs> like I've, I just, it was a mess up and I was working on this side and I was like, Oh, it's so amazing. And like, as I slowly worked and I was like, Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and so this side was just, uh, yeah, it was a mess. The back is also a disaster, but who cares? Cause it's the back of the work and you're not looking at the back of the work. <laughs> um, the other thing is that I used to use an old, um, uh, spring loaded, uh, hoop and it was actually my mom's when she used to do embroidery. Um, and it was, my favorite one because it held my fabric so 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 tight um it's also old and made of metal so i don't know if you're going to be able to see this but you can see can i get you to please focus on the that? yeah you can see the tarnish the rust on the beautiful white fabric and the white stitches so uh, haven't used that hoop since, but this is, I'm, oh my god, I'm so proud of this piece. I love it to death. I'm going to have to finish it myself at some point, um, in order to kind of make up for this. I'm really gonna have to fudge it, um, in some ways, but I just, I love it. It's so beautiful, and I want to frame it so that the frame, or like the mat, comes like right at the edges here, and then there's this like beautiful, blank space up top I just I love it I've never been to Greece it is like one of the next trips I want to take I desperately want to go one day um and this and you know I'll be honest I was I was really crushed at losing my job within the travel industry when COVID first hit because I was working so hard and and I had all of these amazing trips and and I remember when we first got the news that like everything was going to start to be canceled and like things really were like looking quite dire looking forward. I just, I remember these two clients that I had that were going on their honeymoon and they had booked this like dream trip to Greece. Neither of them had ever been and they wanted to do all of the things that I wanted to do while I was there or like when I, when I went and I, I wanted to do all of these amazing things. And when I thought about you know, things getting canceled. I thought about this incredible couple that was just so lovely and kind and just so excited to go on their like honeymoon together and like later on in 2020 and it all had to be canceled. And so I started this as a testament that like one day I, I'm gonna stitch this and then one day I'll get there. And one day that couple that I, that I booked will get there and um, I will get there one day. And hopefully this will be framed before I go. So um, that is Santorini by Stitchrobia, and it is one of my favorite things in the world. My last travel related one, I've got Paris, I've got Greece. This is my other one that I'm really happy with. This is a floral map of the world. These were ironed. I just moved in the last month and I have not gotten my iron out since I moved. So they're not ironed. So my stitching, not yours. <laughs> um, but this is my um, map of the world floral. It's done in that same like periwinkle blue. You, it's really, really like not showing up properly. Like it's, yeah, it's much more like the color of my shirt as opposed to like this light, light, light. It's very much this like color blue, but it's all done in 18 count sky blue Ada, same as the Sense and Sensibility um, uh, piece, all done in the called for colors. And this is called the Floral World Map. It's by Stitches Lovers Shop, uh, 18 count sky blues, Weigart Ada, um, and called for DMC. And I love this, it's so beautiful. Um, oh, it's got crud on it, whoops. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about framing this one. I wanna frame this and put it in view of my uh, virtual office because I work from home. Um, I put this in view so like that all my coworkers and I that work in travel can look at the beautiful floral map of the world. So 
I love this piece so much. I'm so excited to, I was supposed to have it framed at Michael's and then the day that I was supposed to bring it in was actually the day that Ontario went back into lockdown. Um, and I just haven't gone back. And now I'm like questioning how I really want it framed and like, do I want to get it like quoted otherwise? Do I want to just frame it myself? Um, but yeah, this is also really, really beautiful. I love this one. Um, and then this is my most recent finish. Again, I have issues centering pieces in fabric. So this is a, this is the Nolite Te Bastardes Corborandorum. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a handmade, it's a quote from The Handmaid's Tale done in this beautiful art deco frame. This is um, by the Craft Room Maven on Etsy. Um, the yellow or the gold and the green are DMCs. The letters, I'm gonna see if I can show you. Yeah, there you go. Come on, come on. I, uh, this is obviously my first time filming like this. Um, this is uh, the navy lettering and the variegated pink. It's a very slight variegation. Those are both uh, flosses by hand dyed by Rolanda, um, who is a local to me flossed and fabric dyer. The navy is a silk and the pink is a right here. Uh, and the pink is a cotton. Um, this is on my new favorite fabric. I want to use this fabric for everything. I'm currently working on a piece on it right now. This is 36 count silver moon, where some people will take like a white linen or a white Ada and then like tea dye it to get rid of that starkness. And they kind of like go one hue warmer. I feel like this is that, but one hue colder. And I love that because it makes these like warm colors really pop and I love this. I love this and it is like a joke doesn't actually translate to this but it means don't let the bastards grind you down and I feel like we need that energy in our lives we need it um but I was totally inspired by somebody that I saw on on uh Instagram I can't, I think her name is Jen I'm filming on my phone I don't actually know I'm so sorry I'll put her name here. I'm terrible with names. You will know this. I'm terrible, terrible with names. I need to write everything down. Um, terrible with names, terrible with usernames and names. It's bad. I'm sorry. Um, but I watched this as I caught up on the end of the second season, the entire third season and getting ready to, and then all throughout the fourth season, um, I was able to stitch this of The Handmaid's Tale, um, which I watch on Crave. Um, I love this and I, it's so pretty. Um, one of my best friends uh, loved this piece because of all the straight lines. It's just, it's very symmetrical. It's very straight line. Um, and so this was one of our favorite pieces. And those are some finishes. Um, I'm gonna show you some crochet finishes, which I hope you know uh, I'm gonna be very vulnerable about because in the same way that I was very vulnerable with these guys, they're not very good. <laughs> They're not very good. Um, two of the three of them are not good, but I'm gonna show you because I think it's important that we talk about the things that we're just a little bit shit at because I love crocheting. Um, I also love buying yarn now. Like it's, it's a bad thing. Like I really need to stop. I have so much yarn. And I keep being like, oh, well, there's a new, like so-and-so is doing this. I'm obsessed with hand dyed yarn. You'll see this, but anyway, I picked up crochet after watching somebody on TikTok, Sweetly Stitches, talk about crochet all the time. And I'm just like, I think that her videos on, on TikTok are amazing. And I just wanted to learn how to crochet. Um, and so this is my very, <laughs> this is my very first crochet project. And it's a hat, but as you can see, it's just like, it's not even, it's not good. I haven't woven in any ends yet. And when you put it on, it's just, it's not very good. It doesn't fold up properly. No, it's not good. This is made in a swish DK weight yarn. The seaming is terrible. 
Um, this is for a yarn from Knit Picks. Uh, the colorway is Crush. It's this really vibrant, vibrant pink. I made this originally thinking it was going to be perfect and beautiful and amazing and I was going to give it to my friend for Christmas. I'm definitely going to remake this before I give it to her because it's, you know what, it's where I started and it is a learning curve and every new thing you can't be very, you can't be perfect when you're starting something new. And so this was my first hat. This was my second one which is much neater. It's, I'm, I'm, this one is much neater. I love this uh, yarn. It also has such good stretch. Um, it's much neater. It's not perfect. You can definitely see like, it's the, like, it's too short so that it doesn't have the brim that I wanted it to have. But this is done in Kindred yarn. I think it's um, called Ink is the colorway, but you can see it is wool with the strand of, white undyed cotton. Can this please focus? I don't want this to be focused in here. How do I make it focus? Oh, you touch it. Okay, we got you. We got it. Focus back on me. There we go. Um, but yeah, it looks great. This is for another friend for Christmas. It looks much better. It is much better. It's going to have a pom-pom on it eventually. Again, I have an issue with not fully finishing my projects. They just sit in my craft drawer. <laughs> um, but I needed to make these two to be able to make this. I'm so proud of this hat. If you have anything mean to say to me about this hat, I will please ask you not to because I'm so proud of this hat. So this is using Cot Lynn yarn from Knit Picks. Again, it's a blend of cotton and linen, and it is uh, in a fingering weight yarn held double. Um, and the yellow, come on, focus, focus, come on. I don't know how to make it focus properly. There we go. Um, the yellow is in the color white creme brulee, and the purple is lavender i think i'll put all of the details down below but i am just so in love with this hat look at it i made a hat i'm so happy i love it so much it fits properly all of the edges are super neat the top balloons in the way that i wanted it to it has the right amount of stretch just has like just that little bit of stretch that it needs um, and it's lightweight, but it's also got like this heft to it and this structure to it that comes with this uh, cotton drape. And I look at how terrible this was, and I only started crocheting in March, like end of March of this year, of 2021, and I've already gone from this to this. And I'm so proud of myself, and I don't say that enough, but I think that us as crafters need to start saying when we're proud of ourselves. Um, in the interim, like since making those hats, um, I have also made a really beautiful cowl that I gave to my mom. Um, I'll put a picture or like a couple pictures in over here. Um, it is made using, uh, the colorway is White Oak by uh, Camp Fiber Yarns, um, which is a Canadian um, indie dyer. I, I love her yarn. I never want to crochet with anything except for that yarn. Um, I have a couple plans that I will, um, maybe I'll talk about them, but I have a couple more plans of stuff that I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, um, using some more of her yarns. Um, she's having a moving sale right now and it's taking everything in me not to like order it because I want to order her yarn so bad, but, um, I can't, I have a couple trips coming up that I need to put that money away too. So, She's just moving, her shop will be open in September. I can make some purchases after my birthday. Uh, my birthday is August 27th. I'm a Virgo, uh, Virgo, Sun, Aquarius, Moon, Leo rising. Um, I'm also a tarot reader and um, uh, like an astrology nerd. So more fun facts about me, I guess. Um, and so I've, I made that cowl for my mom and I gave it to her and she loves it. I have plans to make a matching hat and cowl out of some more of Laura's yarns, but I will, uh, I will update you when I start those. 
And then other than that, I have been keeping up with uh, TL Yarncrafts. Uh, her name is Tony at TL Yarncraft. She is the queen of crochet. I love her dearly. She has just started up the Crochet Academy. If you are learn, if you want to learn how to crochet, um, go follow her. She's amazing. And one of her first projects that we were working on were these washcloths. And this is the Half Moon washcloth. It's got a little hook on it, so you can hang it up. It's very stiff. It's made out of cotton. This is just a Bernat cotton that I got from Michaels. I think like 50 grams was like a dollar 99 Canadian. Um, it was. It's awesome. I love it. Um, I've already started. I've made three of them now, and I'm start. I started another one when I was on the subway earlier today. Um, I love it, and the stitch pattern is just so beautiful, and it's all made with just single crochets. How cool is that? How cool is that? Anyway, those are my crochet and cross stitch finishes. I currently don't have any crochet whips, whips work in progress, um, but I do have a couple um, cross stitch works in progress that I will show you because I'm very excited to show you. So I have four works in progress. Um, I will start with my two ones that I haven't touched in a little while. Um, yeah, I'll start with those and then I'll work up to my more recent ones. So this is in the budgie project bag from Caroline Off the Grid Needle Arts um, and her shop Evertote. Um, well, oh, is that upside down? It is upside down. Lovely. Great marketing. Evertote.com, um, uh, amazing project bags. These are like, these are floppy in the way that you want them to be a little bit floppy, um, or at least in the way that I like them to be a little bit more floppy. Um, it's like when you get a paperback book and they're just like too stiff, you're like, no, you want it to like flop around a little bit. Like I want it to have this like little bit of like sag and like softness to it. I don't want it to be like, rock hard um and so i love this and in here is a piece that i'm struggling with and battling with so it has been banished until i can figure out what i want to do with it um this is the let me see how i can best hold it up this is the queen's gambit sampler um i will put a photo of what it should look like when it's finished up here this is by vivian powers or the vivster on etsy um i will finish this project because i've paid for it and i want to stitch it um, i will not be buying any more patterns um from uh this shop uh personal reasons i just will not be uh but i do love this pattern and this is what i have so far um this border goes just to there um but this is the first page so this kind of fills out the first page this is done in a variegated dmc dmc 4030 i think it is and then 310. my thing is that i hate how thin this fabric is you i don't think you can tell but like you can it's just it's so thin and it's so flimsy and I this is my first project ever on linen and I was like is this like just how the linen is gonna look on every project and no like I'm working on projects the silver moon um 36 count linen I love it has much more like weight to it that I like this is done on just a 36 count uh I think it's an antique white um it's not bright white but it's an antique white uh Zweigart uh linen and I just, I don't know if I want to finish it in this way or if I want to get um, a new fabric and restart. I don't know. Because I just, I think it's beautiful. I love the way that this looks. I'm almost, like I've done the border on page one. I want to finish page one and then do two, then three, then four. But, so, I just, I don't know. I'll probably pull it out later on in the year um, and and really make a decision. Um, and knowing me, I've already done all of this work. I'll probably just keep working on it. Um, but yeah, that's my first whip. Uh, I'm not really sure how to feel about it. 
um i need to make a decision about another floss color because it was charted in like a diamant glittery sparkly thread that i genuinely hate word working with i hate the dmc diamonts i hate the metallic threads i just do and so i was like oh maybe i will pick like a gold silk that has like a little bit of shine so hey if you have like a, a yellow silk that kind of replicates gold and has a little bit of a shine and like it's a favorite one of yours let me know i would love to take a look at it and, and see if it maybe fits but that is in my budgies bag i love my budgies bag um and then um my second one is also in a burb bag burb bag um and this is one that i started stupidly like three days before i was set to move uh move house and it just got put away and i haven't brought it back out yet but i want to um this also has a matching gosh it's covered in string a matching little notions pouch from the burbs i love the bags i love all of them um and this is the modern folk embroidery rule of life sal that is being done on oh my gosh jeez this fabric i really need to cut these edges off anyway um this is done on a 36 count uh vintage country mocha zweigart linen um in the called for leo and roxy flosses which are this one right here is vampish which i really like um and it's got a little scrabble you don't mind her for p peyton that's me um i love this i love jacob at modern folk embroidery i love his patterns i'm constantly in the battle of like just stitching those patterns um and then in this bag i have the notions pouch which has all of the colors which are just terribly disorganized but yeah you can see vampish plum shadow which wow this light is really not doing any favors for plum shadow it is much more purple and really beautiful um and then caramel which is this front color um but all my flosses stay tucked in my little notions pouch. And then I've got a hoop in here. I like these hoops. I'm super, super basic. This is what I like. I've never used a Q-snap. I've never used a scroll frame. These are my favorite. Uh, this is one of my favorite hoops and it stays in here. Um, I will get back to this eventually, but I'm also working on another modern folk embroidery that I just, I just can't, you know, working on two of them is like a little much for me just because some of the motifs and, and the style of them is so similar that I just, I, it feels like it's the only thing I'm stitching. So I love this and I will get back to it soon. Um, just not yet. Um, I, while I'm talking about modern folk embroidery, I am doing the thing that everybody else is doing, which is the rule of life, uh, Sal. Um, rule of life no fruits of plenty fruits of plenty birds of plenty fruits of plenty there we go the brain the brain has caught up now the brain has caught up to, to the mouth um i have just finished june's and it's august now but i have not started august's um and i am doing this in dmc 38 37 and 210 and this is what this looks like. I'm thrilled with how this is turning out. I, I really am. I'm trying to find the best way to, we're gonna scooch over. There we go. I love the way that this has turned out. I love the purples. This is on a 20 count white Lugana and I don't like it. I don't like the fabric choice. I love the look of it. I really hate the stitching on it. I hate the stitch experience. Um, so. It's the first time I've ever worked with Lugana. Uh, I should have just gone with an Ada, but I wanted to try something new. Um, and I think if I were to use Lugana again, I'd want to use a much higher count because I find that the stitches like slip sometimes will like slip behind, especially because I'm doing this. I've not been saying this the entire time and I'm just realizing this. If it's 36 count, I stitch everything. If it's on Ada, it's two strands over one. Uh, two strands over one and if it's on linen it's two strands over two so this is because it's on lugana it's a two strand over one 
and because of that I find that the stitches slip a lot and I don't love that but I love this I want to start July and August like right away but I have another whip that's just like like stolen my heart so I love this um I love seeing all of the colors that everybody's doing yeah this works that's fine uh, as you can see the fabric I'm so paranoid that I'm gonna run out of fabric that like I've given myself lots of room to start and then also just like it just oh it just keeps going hello <laughs> it just and I won't cut it until it's finished and until I send it to a framer if I ever send it to a framer, I don't finish things. Oh, I'm terrible. Um, but yes, I'm in love with this. Um, her name is Queenie. I call her Queenie um, because of her little, her little crown. Um, she's Queenie and that's just, that's just who she is. So she currently lives in this uh, book sleeve. Uh, this is by Willow and Quill on Etsy. She is a BC based um, uh, maker and designer. And I think she does like, she sells antiques as well. But I have three, two or three of her uh, book sleeves. Um, and I really love them. I think that they're really great. And I love this because it's got like Grecian urns on them. I love them. Um, and then this is the hoop that I use to stitch with the Lugana, and I also use this to stitch on Ada. I find that it is very good at giving me the right tension that I need without allowing me to really just pull the fabric, like way too tight, because I'm known to do that. I pull the fabric way, 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 way too tight. So this works really, really well. I think this is four inches wide. I don't stitch in a hoop that's any larger than six inches because it stresses me out. It is too much strain on my wrists to hold it. So just show her off one more time. Queenie! Yeah, I've got some dangling threads over there because I just, I didn't really feel like cutting threads and I was like, I'll use them when I, I pull everything down. So July's will be here. We just got August's, um, new section which is right in the middle um kind of right underneath that big tree and I don't what I don't know what I'm gonna put there I don't know what I'm gonna do part of me wants to do the tree house the other part of me is like oh I like the fairy tale castle um I like the barn as well so I don't know yet um what are you guys if you guys are doing this all what are you guys putting in the August spot um I think it looks beautiful and I just, I can't decide between the options. I'm so excited to, to make the decision. I don't know what I'm gonna put there yet, but there she is one more time. I'm sure you guys will see her soon. Um, I say that I'm quite monogamous in my stitching. I don't switch projects that often. Um, I kind of worked on this piece until um, July's was, or until June's part was finished. I put it away for most of, uh, uh, June because I was working on this piece because I wanted this done because I was watching a lot of Handmaid's Tale so I wanted that finished but I uh, pulled this one out um, and have been working on this ever since and then I finished June's part and then I treated myself to a new start on Tuesday like this past Tuesday and oh my god it is the project that I am so proud of. I love it so much. Here's my hoop. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Again, it's on Silver Moon, 36 count Silver Moon and Berlinen uh, by Zweigart. And this is a piece that came about because I found a floss that I really loved and was searching for so most of my, my patterns, if I'm going to make changes, I find a pattern that I really love and then find floss that fits it. This was reversed. I found the floss that I loved. I'm going to center myself a little bit more. I found the floss that I loved um, and then I needed a pattern to fit it. So I had ordered, it was my first time ever ordering any type of fancy flosses. I ordered it from Hand, by, Hand Dyed by Rolanda, who is 
York region, Toronto-ish area based um, on Etsy. And this is, uh, it's bobbined now, but it's this silk. Can I please? Hello, is that gonna work? Maybe? Please. No? Anyway, it looks like this. It's beautiful. It's so shiny and it's a dream to work with. And I ordered two skeins of it because I was just like, oh, it's, just, it's a cool looking floss. I'll order a couple skeins of it. And then it arrived and I was like, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I love it so much. I love the colors. I love this. I love the feeling of it. And then I started looking at patterns to possibly pair it with. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to need more floss. I'm gonna need more floss. I'm gonna need more floss. Um, and so I frantically went onto her Etsy shop and I had two of these and she had eight left in stock and I bought her out. I bought the other eight. So now I have 10. This is what it looks like in, in like skein form. Um, it really, it just really is just so, so beautiful. You can really see those colors. Can I like, please? There we go. Yeah, they're beautiful. It's beautiful floss. And then I found the pattern that I was dreaming of and I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I'll, I'll start it eventually. I'll start it eventually. Um, and then I started it the other day and this is less than a week's work on it. And I'm almost done page one. And I am just so in love with this. This is Circus of Diamonds or Cirque de Cairo. I don't know. I'm Canadian. I don't speak French. Um, I speak German. I don't speak French. But this is, whoa, that's being really blown out. But this is the progress that I have on it. This right here marks the side of page one. And then just above this, the bottom of this diamond marks the end of page one as well. So this is page one of Circus of Diamonds by Ink Circles. And just the way that this floss looks on this fabric and the way that the variegation is coming out, it just makes me scream. It's so beautiful. Um, and my, I've left, you know, there's gonna be enough room around each of the edges to frame it. And I just, I love it. I love it so much. And I'm so, 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 so happy with how it's turning out. It's really beautiful. I'm gonna go for page finishes on this and I'm working on, uh, doing, I'm doing this with Pattern Keeper as well, which my tablet is currently plugged in so that I can stitch after I get this video uploaded. Um, I love it. It's so beautiful. Um, she posts these incredible 50 gram uh, or 50 yard hanks on her Etsy, uh, hand dyed by Rolanda. But um, I'm just, I'm, I want more silks. Um, I think that I'm going to do uh, Circus of Circles. Cirque to Cirque, I don't know, um, using Mrs. Satis silk in a popcorn. Uh, I'll put a picture here of what that looks like on her Etsy listing. Um, and I saw that she did it on a black fabric. And so I will order the um, fabric or I will order the floss and then decide the fabric in the same way that I ordered this floss and then I picked the fabric that it looked best against. I tried like 14 different fabrics I ordered so many tiny little pieces of fabric just to see, but I, yeah, I do. I love it. It's one of a kind silk. Um, I'm in love with it. So, and it's little pieces, it's things like this and it's pieces like this that I just, it reinvigorates my love for this craft and for this form in the same way that being able to stitch with a, or being able to crochet with a hand dyed yarn, um, just made me so excited to crochet and I couldn't put it down. Stitching with a floss that's just so beautiful or stitching on a, you know, a pattern like the uh, 2021 Sal um, by Modern Folk Embroidery. Like it's those little bits that remind me like why I love this hobby and why I, I do this and why I dedicate so much time to it. So. There's very loud people in my hallway. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but here she is again. Um, I can't put this down. I genuinely cannot put this down. So you will be seeing lots of um, uh, lots of progress on her in the coming days, weeks, months. Oh, also, I should probably tell you 
um, who these needle minders are by. This is Moon with Constellations. Um, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Did I write it down? No, I did not. Did I write it down? I did. There we go. It's by Heartfelt Crafting Canada or Heartfelt Crafting CA. Um, I will link her Etsy shop below. She's again, I love supporting Canadian artists and Canadian dyers and, uh, and makers. Um, so uh, also because the shipping is so much cheaper so much cheaper um i might sell luxury vacations but i definitely can't afford like 18 dollars shipping on a six dollar item so um there she is again i love her so much what should i name her i feel like she deserves a name um oh my god the floss looks like jolly ranchers i need to put her away and end this video before i just sit here for another oh my god i've been recording for almost an hour i'm so if you have made it this far i'm you have way more dedication than I do. Way more dedication than I do. Um, thank you for, if you've made it this far, for sticking with me. Um, thank you for taking the time to see some of my past finishes and catch up on what I'm working on. And, you know, sit with me for an hour and talk stitching. Even if nobody is watching and I'm just talking to the void, it has been a wonderful way to spend an hour. And I... We'll be back probably in two weeks time. I'm actually going to visit a friend um, in, or maybe three weeks time because I am going to visit a friend um, and we'll probably not have time to record until I get back to all my stitching things. Um, but then, hey, I'll have a ton to catch you up on. So thank you uh, for sticking around. Leave me a comment. Uh, if you have questions for me for the next video, I would love to answer them. Um, if you think that you have a cool pattern that you think I might enjoy, or if you have any recommendations on other floss tubers to watch and other ways to engage in the community, I would love to hear about them. And with that, I will say goodbye, uh, happy stitching, uh, do no harm, take no shit, keep doing you, and I will see you guys later. Thank you for stopping by!